Project. I'm Lorlin of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop, and we're very happy to see you here today. We're working on, I, I needed something to go under my candy bowl or something that I could hang up in the quilt shop. And I have I have Shelly DeSkelly from a couple of weekends ago, and now I wanted to make something a little bit different. So I've seen the whole craze of the coffins. So I thought I'd use my Dresden ruler. Wherever I put it, oh, here it is, okay. And I made my own. So you can either have this as a center uh, centerpiece to a table or hang it up as a wall hanging, or you can even change it into a clock because I'm calling it, in a way, uh, a coffin clock, okay. So um, what I've done is I've taken 10-inch uh, squares. I'm actually, I had a Halloween pack because I didn't have a lot of Halloween fabric here. So I thought, oh, well, uh, I picked up this uh, 10 or 42 pack of Halloween fabrics from uh, Patrick Lowe's and they're called building blocks. So 42 pieces at 10 inches. So I thought, okay, I could use a few of those. Uh, and I only got it for like $11. So it's been in here, uh, in here for a while. So what I want to do is um, because the majority of the fabrics in there were uh, white, orange, and black, I kind of balanced them to go around in a circle, equal portions like black, white, orange, black, white, orange, black, white, orange, okay? And then uh, some of these I actually kind of fussy cut it a little bit uh, with the um, more intricate fabrics here. So it was the coffin looked like it was centered in between and same with like this lacy bit of fabric here uh, just to make sure it was all gonna kind of line up a bit, right? So I have this other one that I like. I like that little bit right there. I'd like to put that as the centerpiece to one of my coffins. And then these two other ones here are just, just they're just the squares of the fabric. Obviously this one was done in the white and this one was done in the orange. I just add a little more color and pizzazz around and I can kind of fussy cut this anywhere I wanted on this. It's kind of got the cat, it's a little bit of cross and you know a little uh, marker there. Uh, there's other little things, there's the cauldron, there's the, the black bird, you know there's the trick-or-treat, there's there's lots of things I could you know specifically to choose to pick out on that if I was looking for something exact right. So well, what I like to do is do this one first, find the cutter. Okay, and I do like this little uh, black diamond part with the little lace on either side of it. So what I did is to make sure that I'm not gonna get confused of where I'm cutting on this, I put a little mark at the eight and a little mark at the 18, which is really only 10 inches in between, and line up that center line right in the center of the art, the art that I really want to be in the center of the coffin, okay? So I'm lining it up, making sure my lines are straight, coming all the way up to there, and having it so it's even that those center red lines here are on like either side of that little design that I like right in the center, okay? So move back just a smidge, make sure it's nice and even. And all your lines are all, because this is, you know, you only get one chance at this, so take a moment if you need to, okay? Wiggle and woggle it so it gets, you know, the best you can. Okay, and then put even pressure down, and then on both sides. Okay, and I'm gonna move my hand over here, out of the way. Okay, and that, with that design in the center, and this flipped, and this flipped here, I just kind of flip the corners down just a little bit, just kind of to kind of give it that little bit of a coffin shape, and then folded the edge down a little bit as well. And that'll be in the center, okay? I like that, that's pretty, okay? And you could have done, you know, whatever you liked on it, you didn't have to, to fussy cut it, but you know, it adds a nice little unique design, and it's right in the center, so. All right, we need two more. And I do kind of like the cat in this one, because he reminds me of Mr. Clive. So we're gonna put him so he lines up right in the center-ish with the bats and the candy and the bit of a spider web and a bit of a skull, okay? So I like that one for that one. That'll be another one of the whites, okay? We gotta fold those and then I need one more for the other orange, okay? So what else do I like in here that we could get? Ooh, the RIP, but I think it'll have to be upside down-ish or a little on an angle. Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking. That looks good. Perfect. It's got a skull in there, a bit of a witch's hat and some candy. There we go, line it up. Straight down, and the only reason why I put the tape on there is so I didn't get confused. I wasn't going to seven and six or something like that, and then I end up with the wrong cut, and then I'd be very mad at myself, so. 
No, we don't need that. All right, so now this point was here is to fold these down just a little bit and give them a press, kind of giving that little bit of coffin shape. I'm sure you can come up with more of a, 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 a different shape if you wanted to. You don't even have to do it that way. Um, you know, this is just a, a something to trying to play off Halloween, right? So, do, do, do. And a lot of things I've made in the past, I've sold because people have seen it and then they've liked it. And then I'm like, oh, sure, yeah, I can make another one. <laughs> and then I never end up making another one. <laughs> There was a big, massive pumpkin quilt out there somewhere from about five, six years ago. It's probably a queen-sized, big, big, big pumpkin. All right. All right, now I just go in to fold the little edge in on each side of that Dresden blade, fold it in just a little bit, just because I don't want that raw, raw edge um, being uh, there all the time. I want to fold that under. I don't mind the top part there because I kind of like the pinking sheared part of it, but uh, the rest I'm just going to kind of just give a little fold under. Okay, so we'll do the next two and then we'll pin them onto the centerpiece there and, uh, and, and start continuing on with what I had going on for this project. I was gonna do a pillow and then Pop was like, oh, what, do make, what about doing this? And you know, and then I was like, oh boy, okay, all right. Well, we could do that too. <laughs> he just kind of steps it up a bit, you know. There we go, just fold under just a little bit. You could even do this with base stitches if you wanted to, to keep it there. You know, if you didn't want to do the iron part or you don't have an access to an iron, you could just fold it and do a little base stitch and, and, and do that and keep it that way. And then when you stitch it down, you could use the blanket stitch, a zigzag stitch, one of your favorite stitches. Um, you know, if you had something that was very Halloween-y, you know, that would be kind of cool. Like a bat or something, or a witch's boot. All right, one more little side to press here. Okay. Okay, now, and my challenge with the rest of the pack, because I only used a few of these, uh, there's only about, I don't know, obviously one each, and then uh, at the centerpiece, so 13, 14, 14 pieces or whatever. Uh, the rest, I'm going to make myself a cloak on point, I'm gonna make a quilted cloak, and that's gonna be next weekend's project. So I'm gonna get quilted up on the long arm, and then we're gonna cut it and make the cloak out of it next weekend. So stay tuned for that, looking forward to that. All right, so as you can tell, I've stitched down some of my blacks already and a couple of my oranges. Um, obviously I needed more to do, so I need to get them in their position, pin them down, and then stitch them around. Uh, I did kind of stuff one to see whether I liked it or not. I haven't really decided because when you come down on either side, you still have this big gap in the center here. You can stuff it, don't stuff it, you know. I don't know, I kinda, kinda like it that it's fluffy. I don't know, I'll decide. We'll figure that out. <laughs> we'll figure it out as we're going along. Okay, so what we need here is a, I think that was, this one was gonna go down here. There. And then we had a white that needed to go there. And then this orange was going to go up there. Yeah, so it's just kind of equal the textures about, you know, the busyness of those little Dresdens, right? Okay, so just kind of line it up. And I put a hexagon, and you'll see I just used, this is my AccuQuilt cutter. It's one of my, uh, obviously, hexagon um, uh, cutters. And I just use that as a nice shape, uh, traced it out, cut two squares of the same, put them together, and then just flipped with a little center hole. And then I've got a nice, you know, centerpiece. I don't have to worry about it coming apart or anything. Now here is a difficult part. You gotta pin everything in place, okay? That takes a lot of pins. So we'll put some over here. And you wanna make sure it's right. So I'm gonna tuck it in just a little bit. There we go. Like I said, you hang it up on the wall, put it under your candy bowl, stick it on the door. You know, do another cutout of it. It doesn't have to be square. You can make it circle. You can, you know, do whatever you like. So it can be like the, you know, a wreath that goes on the door or something like that. But all right, pins, 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 pins. Okay, here. Just make sure that little raw edge is tucked under. Okay. 
and seam up over here. There we go. And it's very nice decorative coffins. I mean, I don't want a nice coffin. Okay, do do. There. That seems like it's up on that corner where it's supposed to be. Because I figured with the hexagon, I had the corners to do 12 and 6, and then the flat sides to do 3 and 9, and then the other corners to do like 2 and 7, and you know, and 11 and 5, and so on and so forth. And it worked out, it worked out in my brain. So. Hopefully, you understand where I was getting the thought from. Do. And of course, you could sew all these together, like you know how you normally would do a Dresden, butt them up and then make this huge, you know, there'd be one in here and here and here and here. I kind of like this little bit of a flower sort of, you know, layout to it. Just kind of popped out. Now we get to stitch all these down with our favorite stitch. I've done some with the blanket stitch. I've done some with the zigzag. And I have another stitch on there too. It's one of my favorites. It's usually what I use for binding. I'm machine binding. Okay, so there's that one and that one. Now I just need to make sure that that one gets pinned down. The other orange, and then we'll sew them. Oops, I don't want that one. Okay, let me scoot it towards me. Mind yourself, you don't get poked. Okay, flip that little side down. Trying to make sure it's equally portioned being in between, you know, you know, 12 and 10. They're all equally spaced. I've already got all my my big chocolate bars. I went to Costco and got my big chocolate bars for my trick or treaters. I'm very excited. I don't get a whole lot. I get maybe I don't know. Well, most people know I have a big chocolate bar, so of course I get more. <laughs> but um, uh, anywhere between fifty to ninety, and I got ninety bars this year, so. I think that should do it. And we're not uh, too late either. I'm, you know, I'm early to bed. So, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'm done. So I'm always out there though. We just got a fire going and stuff. All right, let's move that one, shift it down a little bit. I love that little fabric, it's so cool. And you can see how it actually changes if I were, you know, if I didn't balance out the orange, if I just went and flipped it to the black and the white, that, that right there, if you were to have picked another black and white for that spot right there, you could have had a really nice different look as well. But I do like it with the uh, orange, white, and black checkered because it kind of brought all the colors in together to me, okay? So just line it up, put my points at where they need to be, my flat sides where they need to be. And I'm just going to pin the center because I do want to get down close to some of these under edges here to make sure they're all getting sealed under, okay? So we'll just put that there and put this one off to the side. So I'm still to decide. I could pick that out before, obviously, <laughs> before I sew this down. <laughs> or, uh, you know, at least uh, wh maybe the 12, the 6, and the 3, and the 9. That's where I could have done that to make those ones pop out if I really tried to, to make it a, a, a clock, right? All right, so here we go. Pop underneath the machine. Let's do some sew-ins. What was it for the orange? Okay, well, let's do the white ones first and then I can go back and do the orange. Oops, it's okay, it's just a marking. All right, so here's the white one. Pardon if my hand gets in the way. And I just had a nice orange thread. I Black could have been just as pretty. Uh, if you had a glow in the dark, that would be kind of cool too. Um, you know, whatever, even white. But I had orange, so I'm using orange. I thought a nice pop-up right against that gray fabric as my background. Okay. Make sure when you're coming to your points, you're kind of stopping on the outs. Oops, I meant, didn't mean to cut the thread. Oopsies. Uh, stopping on the outside so it has less of a chance to mess up the pattern as it's going around, right? Okay. 
Okay, lay flat, tuck that corner under. Up, and gently would pick it up and move it. You got a lot of pins hanging out in there. Up, tuck that down. Oops, sorry, it's getting in the way. We don't want to sew into our pins. And then come down as far as you can, because like I said, all those raw edges are gonna get tucked underneath when we sew this, this uh, center um, cover on, okay? So let's pick another of the white ones here, because I kinda wanna keep the stitches consistent for each color. I didn't have to change them up, but I did. Gives you something else to look at when you're looking at it, right? It's like, oh, those stitches are different. I really like how the orange shows up on the white. It's quite pretty. How do you guys decorate your house for Halloween? We have a couple of uh, blow ups. We've got a Grim Reaper and a ghost, and we've got three pumpkins. And of course we always, you know, always have a, a fire in the fire pit and hot chocolate and for Halloween night and stuff like that. And yeah, we always, we always do it go completely nutso, but we do have some fun. We try to decorate. I, I like carving pumpkins, but I haven't carved them in a couple of years. It's just, uh, just the time got away. I'm going to try and set some time all aside this year. Because I've spent up to 15 to 20 hours carving pumpkins. All right, so coming all the way down there. Find our next white one, which is over there. Okay. Do, do. Getting less and less pins to deal with as we're going around. Okay. And to find my center of my fabric, I just folded it in half, did a little press, folded it in half again, gave another little press, and of course that gave me the nice uh, angle I needed to work off to get me my, you know, north, south, east, west, or, you know, 12, 6, 3, 9, whatever it is, you know, that you want to go for. And then that helped me set my um, hexagon in there properly between the points of the north, south, east, west sort of thing and, uh, and went from there. So that helped me uh, get a nice center on my fabric. So I cut this gray piece at 40 inches and of course, it's pretty much uh, as the, the width of it as well, is even numbered 40, 42. So I knew that would give me a nice big gray square to work with. So whether I choose to have it, like I said, as a wall hanging or as a table topper or underneath the candy bowl. Nonetheless, my cloak will match the, the candy bowl and the wall hanging, so I'll all be matchy-matchy. And same with Mr. Uh, Skelly, Shelly the Skelly. He'll, um, he'll get, he'll, I'll put, make sure to have that, some of that fabric on, on me as well that he has on the back of his. Okay, so one more white one here. Okay, take the pins out as you go. Make sure you're, oops, that's the one that's stuffed. Bless Pop. Shift. It's getting 
very windy out there. there. Just got a couple of oranges to stitch down. And then our little center. See if I stuff it then I really can't have it as a table topper because it's gonna knock things over unless you don't put things on the coffins which makes sense. Okay now I need to go back to my zigzag which I need to go back up to my number two or number one page number one page okay there and I'm gonna make the stitch a little bit closer not too too much just just enough to get it all stitched down and I got two more to do I got this one and that one so since I'm closer to this one let's do that there here and zigzag. zag. Like I said, I really like how the thread pops up against the colors, especially the gray, or the red, I mean the orange, I'm sorry. I said red. I meant the orange. The other red. <laughs> Another way to use your Dresden ruler if you have one and you can always if you don't have a Dresden ruler you can always make uh, tape marks on your regular ruler and uh, that can help guide you as well there's many there's lots of little videos out there to help to get you to cut proper um, wedges if that's what you're looking for but the best thing to do is just invest in one put it on your Christmas list get one of those uh, people that love you so much to get it for you Someone's fabric was just so cute. I'm like, oh, I'm like, how do I make coffins out of this cute fabric? <laughs> it's candies and polka dots. I'm like, oh, and then there I found some of the more of the textured stuff with the like lace lookalike on it. And I was like, oh, I like that. That would make a nice coffin. Just one more to do. Over here. Do, do, do. It's looking good. It's looking real good. Okay. Do, do, do. And I could have just chose to use a plain piece of fabric instead of using this colored piece back here, but I don't know. I just I wanted to use all that was going on <laughs> with the with the Halloween. out of the way. And stop on the outside, foot up. And of course you can free motion a, bun a big spider web. Oh, geez, I'm taking everything with me that's left over. <laughs> uh, spider web around the background or in a corner. And you can make a whole other like little graveyard scene with little tombstones and crosses or, you know, you know, stitch it out so there's a church in the background or just a, you know, a classic graveyard with the fence, the wrought iron fence and stuff like that. There's lots of things. You make a little ghosts. Add ghost appliques, put just little eyeballs, little googly eyeballs here and there. That would be kind of cool. Just glue them on or buttons for eyes or something. Okay, now, 
There we go. I don't think I like the stuffing. So the question is, how do I get it out? <laughs> I think I'm just going to wiggle. Just going to wiggle the um, the top and try and get it all out. I would like it to lay fat, just flat. I, I, I think the, the idea is cute, but I don't think it's going to work for this project. So it's okay. I'll save it for something else. Maybe like a puffed up flower in the springtime or something or a really stuffed snowman. <laughs> <laughs> You're fluffing up. Come on, you. I know you want to come out. Okay. There's more. I'll probably use my little handy dandy extra useful knitting noodle. Neat noodle. <laughs> needle <laughs> tool. Come here, yo. I'll get it out. I'm not worried. And then I'm just going to stitch all the way around to uh, seal that center part in. And of course, the next fun part is getting it all quilted up. So maybe I'll have to try and I'll have to get Skelly done and this one done before Halloween. And uh, I think uh, that'll be really kind of cute. Just making sure. Get the last little fluff out. There's just a little bit here. You know, you don't know until you try something. And I gave it the time that I was trying to put the rest of the stuff on until I decided if it was going to be a yo or a no. So. And it's a no, but that's all right. Not every idea works out. Okay, almost there, sorry. I feel like I'm wasting your time right now doing this. She got the big tweezers out. There we go. Come here, you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Floof out. Okay, now, do do. Take that pin and that pin. Flip this out. And then pin these where I'm going to make sure everybody's covered. Okay? So line it up. That edge is covered. Tuck that down there. That edge is covered there. Everybody's kind of lined up where they need to be. Okay, and then we'll stick this down with a nice straight stitch around because I don't have to worry about the raw edges. They're all tucked in. Okay. All right, do a couple more pins over on the other side here to make sure it stays. In position. Okay, it's all good. All right, what do we think? I think it's kind of cute. So whether you have this way or that way, it doesn't really matter. Like I say, you can fill it all out and uh, spiders and graveyards and bats and cats and rats and elephants, whatever you want to do. <laughs> all right, so nice straight stitch. Make up Nomi here. There we go. And we'll just start over here on the orange. Okay, and then foot up. And a nice blanket stitch would be fine there too. If you had some rickrack, rickrack would be nice too. Rickrack, you can use it as the uh, spider part coming down and they can put a couple of big buttons and then, you know, some legs off that button and you got yourself an awesome looking spider. Good project for the kids. Okay, around we go. You could make an applique pumpkin and put it in the center. You know, if I, did, I wanted it to, or did, you know, wanted it to be directional in any way, you could totally do that. You could put a bat. You can put a ghost. You can write just Happy Halloween. Many, many options. I could even stuff this part if I wanted to have that like to puff out. If I was going to do it all, I could, you know, stuffed out the the coffins and then stuffed out the center part too. So. Okay, there it is. Hi, 
have yourself a fantastic weekend and I hope you make something kind of cool like this for Halloween. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.